Hey everybody, this is Kyle. Here's a clip from my stream with Matthew and Jennifer, and we are checking out Ali Bata playing Jingle Bell Rock, and this is such a holiday classic. Let me know what you think of this one in the comments. The crowd pick, in, in fact, another reason why we do the crowd pick is because I, it, since it's early, I'm still drinking my coffee, everybody. Kopi mana kopi, kopi mana kopi, do you have some cold brew? I do. <laughs> hmm. Let's do some Jingle Bell Rock, a leap style. Without further ado, musicians panel react to a leap bata playing Jingle Bell Rock on his finger style acoustic guitar cover. Here we go. What a way to start the show! <laughs> the 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 ragtime feel of that was, was so much fun. It wasn't as busy as like a you know ragtime piece on on guitar or something, but the, the the way it was put together was was so much fun to listen to. It was so even, mild, and enjoyable. You know, I could um, yeah that that stuff like that, uh, especially on guitar, is just so. Um, so easy to enjoy you know um i like the you know the the bluesy aspects to it and following the bass was fun you know it's like do 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 you know and you could just you know kind of, kind of like a uh, guns and roses at their peak you know you could just follow that bass line and and it gave you a different way to ride through a song so yeah it's awesome stuff yeah dude it's so mellow like, yeah, I know. Like it was just super like, chill. What do you think, Jennifer? I was singing along. I was singing along with it, but <laughs> he was awesome. Um, yeah, I just love that ragtime feel, and like every time I hear that song, it's so funny. I think of the movie Mean Girls, where they're like Jingle mm. Bell, Jingle. You ever see that? <laughs> anyway, oh, yeah. he did it. Um, yeah, <laughs> he did it amazing as always. Never missing a beat. Never, you know. It's like you can tell he just knows the stuff. He's amazing. And he just made it really fun. I just, I love the acoustic guitar with him. So amazing. I love how he kept switching octaves. Like he started out, yeah. da, 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 you know, up in the soprano range. And then, you know, he flips the melody around to whatever mm -hmm. octave is necessary that he can have that bass line and the chord pattern going. And he's like, you, you, if you're watching his hands, I mean, like 
he, yeah. what he's playing is changing a lot. Like it's not like he's just sitting on an A chord or something. He's going all but over it, the place. It, it's all position based, though. I sure, mean, it's sure. like, I mean, but you know, g- g- guitar. That's not necessarily a sign of difficulty. You know, moving your finger around. I mean, yeah, it's hard to jump from like say second fret to fourteenth or something. That's where people make mistakes. But when you have your index finger as an anchor. You know, he's using sure, his other sure. fingers for the melody, and that's. I'm I mean, talking people about always all lo- the harmonics and the tap harmonics yeah. and the, all True. the stuff he's yeah. thrown in there. His hands, both of them, are constantly moving. Is what I'm saying. I'm not trying I to say it was I super did, hard. Sorry. I'm saying I'm trying to say there's this constant motion, this constant change happening in the music, and yet it was never rushed. It never lost any of its mellowness. In fact, yeah. if anything, it got mellower as it went. I, and that's hard to do, especially when you're doing something so busy and involved. You know, that left brain wants to get in there and push and make you rush. And that's a sign of seasoning that you're able mm-hmm. to sit back and just lay in that pocket. You know, that's what I'm trying to say. This was not his most technically right. challenging piece by any stretch of the imagination. What was so nice about it was the fact that regardless of the fact that there was a little bit of difficulty to it, he made it sound like walking through the park high on a Saturday. Yeah. I have a question for, for I have a question for you guitar players. Um, since I'm learning, how do you do octaves? Do you just move your hand up and down the guitar for octaves? Is that how you do it? Or is there like that, a thing you press? That, that's the simple way. You know, uh, part of it is the tuning and and what you're trying to do with the melody. Brought up before, you know, a leap is always really good at finding. Um, I shouldn't say finding, putting a song in a key or whatever where the melody is is in a certain range where he can do different things with the harmonics. Right. And um, it, you know, it just kind of depends because on on guitar you got about two useful octaves for melody. You know, over the mm-hmm. bass note because the way the the strings are usually set up. Um, and the, the way that standard tuning and, and most tunings give you um, that range. So it's within reach without having to do something crazy yeah. with your fingers. You know, you got that within like three or four frets, you know. Right. Yeah, yeah we, ha- we we haven't quite gotten to octaves yet, but I know we will eventually. But um, yeah, <laughs> and I noticed that with the Leap Leaps songs, um, like yesterday when I did the song Numb with him for the karaoke, um, I had to decide, do I want to play it high or do I want to play it low? And it was kind of one of those things where like, I couldn't, you know, because of how he did it. Yeah. And you it got it. Pretty cool yeah. If he plays mm-hmm. a song in between tuner keys, which on the mm-hmm. guitar is absolutely freaking fine. Right. Who cares? You're playing a solo guitar. You don't have to be in tune to a tuner, right? A tuner right. is just like this arbitrary frequency. What matters is that, you know, the harmony sounds good with the melody. That's what matters. It doesn't matter whether, you know, you're at 440 or if you're at 440.2 or 439.97. It doesn't, that doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when I'm collaborating live on the saxophone, that is the hardest, most challenging part. Because most of the songs are pretty close in tune with 440. So most of the Mm -hmm. songs with one mouthpiece tweak, I can be with him. But right. every once in a while, he'll do that song where it's between E and E flat somewhere mm-hmm. in tuning. And I have to decide, do I want to tune down or do I want to tune up? And yeah. so at that point, it's literally which is closer, right? I had that issue. I had that issue yesterday. And like, so I was, I decided to play it down the octave because the, the octave, I'm talking better. about a half step. I'm not talking about an no, octave. No, no, no. I know. No, I'm talking, well, this, I'm, I'm also talking about an octave because I decided on this, on, for the tuning on the saxophone with him, it sounded better to go down than up. So, um, so I had to play around with it a little. You got, you got to like, you got to like mix it up. You know what I mean? And yeah. I really like how Elite was mixing it up on the guitar. You know, it was nice. It, it was, it was, you know, mm-hmm. the. I love it. You like, you, you might think if you saw the notes on the staff, like how disjointed the melody was because you're moving around off. like it look it looked really weird on the staff, right? But when you hear it on the guitar, it just it just sounds great. I mean, it's not yeah. exactly the way it's written, but you know, 
it's got the spirit of the song. It's got the melody of the song, although they just have some octave jumps. I mean, you know, I think it's cool because he, like, he, he played, yeah. he arranged it in the most user friendly way for him to play it and feel it and sound good and, right. and emote. And yeah, I loved it. It's great. I loved it. I loved it too. And in your last lesson, we were talking about keeping the right hand moving. No matter what your left hand yeah. is doing, we were talking about not stopping the right hand, just strumming through it. We were talking about taking the left hand and leaving on your chord change early before it's mm -hmm. time for you to strum. So that way your fingers have a fighting chance of being there. But even if they're not, go ahead and hit the strum. Go ahead and keep right. that right hand, keep that rhythm moving, regardless of what it sounds like. Okay? And take that to the next level and see what a leap was doing. Because... He wasn't just strumming the guitar and keeping it going, right? Do you see what I'm saying? He was I using do. his fingers yeah. and coming up and doing harmonics with his right hand, all like this craziness all at the same time. His left mm -hmm. hand was going up and down and switching around and blah, 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 bass notes and all this stuff. Right. If he was worried about hitting every note perfect, he and wouldn't he be able to he do totally that. Did. He wouldn't be yeah. able to. He wouldn't be able to make it groove like that. He's not going for perfection. He's going for expression right, and he right. expresses himself so well that it feels perfect anyway. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And ba so based on his music, I would think if I talked to Elite, he would go, hey, how are you doing? Everything <laughs> is very cool today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm joking. I mean, I, I mean, you know, I I, I, that's funny because yeah. I mean, everything he plays is is within this kind of nice uh, container. Awesome. You, you know what to expect. You know, definitely. Yeah. You know what Hi, Kyle. to expect. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Kyle, just 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 weigh in a little bit to Jennifer on the on that strumming right hand. How because she, she was doing oh, yeah. this thing where My he would go to switch sir. chords and the music just would stop. Yeah, you, you gotta. Scared. <laughs> yeah, trade. I always would tell people think of your, you know, right hand is the timekeeper, the engine, the drive, and and Matthew said groove. Keep that yeah. groove going, and and you have to, you know, especially when you're learning chords, you get that, you know, anxiety like, oh, I need to get the shape, I need to get the position, I need to get the fingers in place. But there's a different kind of. Like whenever you, you learn, you know, get, get the muscle memory down, then it's about that groove, you know, and, right. and let the, the right hand guide the groove aspect, you know, it's like, yeah, you know, learn, learn yeah. the shape, but then get it there right before, because when you're playing music, what, what, what do you, I mean, whenever I play music, I'd rather people say, Hey, your groove was tight. That was mm -hmm. so, you know, you were playing and it got me moving. As opposed yeah. to, wow, you played your notes exactly on time. You know, that's not how normal people are. Typical music fans approach music. They're thinking, hey, it moves me. Yeah. And that's how you move people, you know. Right.